Hi, Ben Kingsley here. In this expert how-to video, I want to talk to you about or introduce another concept which flows on from the buyer's decision quadrant. Now, you can check out the buyer's decision quadrant video um, in this area of the expert section under our how-to videos. But I want to basically bring that further. I want to talk about the practicality test. And basically what I'm talking about there is we know the concept of demand and supply. We understand that you know, supply is led by demand and sometimes we can overshoot on supply and that obviously impacts prices. But I also want to get into the psychology, the psychology of the decision making around where we buy. So leading on from the buyer's decision quadrant, I call this the practicality test. And what I'm focusing in on is I'm looking at my audiences. Now we also know that 70%, and I'll repeat this, 70% of property is owned by owner occupiers. So they are price makers and investors should be price takers. So if we put our owner occupier buyers hat on and we start thinking from a practical standpoint, what are the considerations in which owner occupiers are making their decisions, we can then start to understand the concept of practicality test. Okay, so let's give, I wanna give you an example. Let's say we've got a couple with two children, you know, sort of an eight year old and maybe a 12 year old. Now, they're going through the decision of where do they wanna live and what type of dwelling, what type of home is going to accommodate their needs. Now, the reality is, if we looked at, say, a one bedroom unit, well, that's not gonna be able to accommodate the bed space that they need, so it fails naturally the practicality test, but that's easy to understand. But let's make it a little bit more challenging around location. So let's say there's a two bedroom apartment or a three, no, even better, a three bedroom apartment. And here I am in, in a city location. So I'm thinking perfect uh, bedroom for us with an ensuite and then two extra bedrooms and a bathroom in this apartment. And so initially it's starting to say, well, okay, well it passes the initial tests. But what about when I get into us living? Now, where's the schooling? How are we going to get from, say, the city location where we've got congestion and traffic to be able to get out to the school zones? Now, we might be able to do that because we might be living or, or wanting our kids to go to the high school that's located in the city. But then it comes down to what about the sporting weekend activities that we want to plan for? Okay, so we've got two cars and we want to basically be able to move around. Now, we need those two cars because naturally I need to take little Johnny to his basketball game and my wife needs to take Sarah to her netball game. And that, you know, they move around. That's not always in the same location. So, you know, would we be able to do that through public transport? Well, not through a lot of planning. We're all time poor. And then I look at that accommodation and I say, there's only one car spot. So where am I going to put the second car if I can't do that? So all of a sudden, that type of concept fails the practicality test. And this leads me into the view around where mainstream audiences make their decisions around where they want to buy. And this is really important because remember, owner occupiers drive the value because they buy with their heart, not their heads. So investors need to get on those coattails to identify what we call investment grade property as opposed to investment stock, which a lot of investors make the mistake of buying and they get the poor returns from those. So this video was all about just giving you a little example of what the practicality test is about. Now, if you want to learn more about the practicality test, I encourage you to listen to our podcast called The Property Couch. Now, we're going to be talking about that and we're also going to be doing a more detailed video which one day will be in this how-to session as well. And we'll show you the link to get to that large video. And we're going to take you through that whole concept in more detail. Because the more knowledge you have about what the buyers are thinking, the better the likelihood that you're going to be buying that asset that's in the biggest demand that people really want, and that pushes the value higher, which gives us the best returns. But it also affects the tenants. You know, they are going through the same process in terms of what type of accommodation is practical for them when they're looking to, to rent in a particular property in a particular location. 
So no doubt there it is an art, there's a lot of science to this, and I wanted to saturate you in this sort of expert section around the type of thinking that goes into the idea of understanding these little nuances and these little changes that we try and identify to get the best returns when we're investing. Thanks for watching.